Well, good morning, Cornerstone Community Church. I just wanted to make a quick uh, video post this morning just to kind of update you on where we are uh, on our reopening strategy uh, as we continue to uh, move through the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, as you know, uh, as of five o'clock today, North Carolina is moving to phase two of uh, the governor's reopening plan. However, uh, phase two, uh, there were some tweaks to that phase uh, that uh, we, quite frankly, were not anticipating uh, as the original plan was rolled out a, a month or so ago. Obviously, this is a very fluid situation, and uh, obviously, uh, again, nobody has led through a pandemic before, so everybody's learning as we go. Um, you know, obviously, we were anticipating phase two to mean that uh, that churches could operate at about 50% of the uh, fire code capacity. Well, that was not uh, what came out uh, in the governor's plan. Uh, the limits on indoor uh, meetings are still there, and uh, kind of a confusing additional cap was put on outside gathering. Uh, so we're still trying to, to get some clarity on that and try to discern exactly uh, what the parameters really are. Uh, that said, uh, we are also aware, as you are, of the uh, federal judge uh, injunction that was placed uh, last week uh, on the, the moratorium on inside worship services. And many churches have begun to initiate indoor worship services uh, based upon that ruling. Um, even with that ruling, however, don't don't forget that still with the caveat of having to maintain social distancing, six feet apart, that kind of thing, uh, masks, those kind of things. Uh, one of the developments uh, that I don't think anybody was thinking about with that was that uh, insurance providers that cover churches, uh, churches are required to have a liability policy in place. Our church is no different from that. We have a liability policy that covers any kind of accident, that kind of thing. Well, uh, Basically, insurers are not required to cover uh, claims based on any kind of uh, pandemic infection. Uh, so there's the, the rub. Churches that choose to meet inside, even though the federal judge struck down the ban, uh, they are opening themselves up to liability. They can be sued. Uh, we are seeing that uh, already. I've got a friend of mine who is a part of Acts 29 Church Planning Network, and uh, churches in Texas as well as South Carolina have uh, actually had some situations where they have been uh, had the threat of being sued uh, because people came in to their churches. And, and unfortunately, the day in which we live, there are people that are looking for a quick lawsuit. So obviously, there is a liability issue there, even with going in at this season. Uh, all that said, our elders are still praying through and working through all of this to try to come up with a plan that will get us back together as soon as possible. Again, and remember, uh, our parameters are this. Number one, we are going to pray about this and we are going to do what we feel like the Lord is leading us to do to bring the maximum amount of glory to his name. Number two, we are always going to do what is in the best interest of the health and safety of our people. We will not compromise on that. Uh, and number three, we are going to do everything in our power to maintain a good witness to our community. We are going to love our neighbors by doing the right thing in this. Uh, you know, again, this is a fluid situation. Uh, you will be hearing more uh, coming out first of next week as far as what our plans are going into June. Uh, as for this Sunday, obviously, we will be online only as we have been. You can check out our service on Facebook Live as well as YouTube. Uh, but we will be doing some things differently here in the very near future. Again, we are monitoring the situation. We're collecting the information as best we can, and we are going to to try to do our best to, to do what uh, meets those three criteria that I just laid out. Uh, again, I want to stress and emphasize, uh, if other churches are choosing to meet in person, that is their decision, and we do not, uh, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, that is the, that's their house. They have to make the best decision for their house, uh, and I give them the freedom to do that. Uh, we're going to do the same thing at Cornerstone Community Church. We are going to make sure that uh, 
we are doing what is consistent. Again, uh, I thank you so much for your patience through this. Uh, I want to reiterate, Cornerstone uh, is doing great through this pandemic. Uh, we're so excited to see how God is moving among us. Uh, you know, uh, yes, I'm tired of preaching to a camera, and I'm sure you're tired of watching me on television. Uh, but the fact is, God is still at work, y'all. The gospel is not in chains. And I, I want you to know that. I want to stress that. The gospel is not in in chains. It's going out and God is doing great things among us in spite of our inability to be together. Uh, our Zoom life groups are, are doing really well considering. Uh, yes, it's a different, uh, you know, a different feel uh, looking at each other on a screen, but, you know, we are still gathering uh, just as many people on Zoom as we were gathering in person before the pandemic. Uh, financially, our church is doing really, really well, uh, and it's a testimony to God. You know, we just completely completed the 20th week of 2020. And uh, the our, our giving over the second 10 weeks, which was the pandemic weeks, uh, we are actually almost $10,000 ahead in giving uh, above where we were the first 10 weeks of the year, which we were meeting in person. Uh, we've actually seen an increase in our giving throughout the pandemic. That is a testimony to the power of God and the generosity of his people. We are so very thankful for that. And uh, let's, let's continue to, to do that. That is a testimony and a witness to our community as to the power of God. You know, so let's not get discouraged in this. Let's not uh, feel like that somehow we're missing out on something. Because, you know, the church is not the place. The church is the people. And as much as I want to get back together and get in person and hug everybody, you know what? I want everybody to be safe. I want everybody to be healthy. And so therefore, if I have to limit my desire and my freedom to, to protect others, then that's what I want to do. Uh, again, uh, this is fluid, and I keep saying that. I'm not repeating myself because I'm old. <laughs> I'm repeating myself because I want to emphasize the fact this is fluid. So please uh, continue to monitor everything. Monitor our church Facebook page. Monitor your email. And uh, as soon as we have more information on what we're going to be doing going forward, I will certainly let you know. But again, um, I I've never been more proud to be the pastor of Cornerstone Community Church. I've never been more proud uh, to be a part of such a wonderful group of people. Uh, I love you all so much. And uh, yes, as you can tell, the beard is coming back. So uh, looking forward to seeing you guys very soon. God bless you all. And we'll talk to you later.